one from exactly the same one you carry on transporting it wherever you need to awesome hey well, let's put it out Alrighty, now from lit elephant dung to the things that make the elephant dung. Hopefully you can... We are completely surrounded by a massive herd of elephants. Look at this, there's a tiny little one here. There's a female who's got a very interesting recurved tusk. We are on a live African safari. It is Father's Day and uh, we've found some father's creations with this big herd. Some tiny little ones. There's probably about 30 or 40 elephants around us at the moment. Both sides of us. Look at that. Tiny! Now we're just going to move so we can get into a good spot to see them. Whoa! See you too! position so we can get those Ellie's walking up to us again. We go. Hello everybody, back again. I'm echoing. That's because the sound was on and you've had to come back to us. You do know, of course, that we're live from the African bush and of course that brings with it certain technological difficulties. But anyway, here we are. What we're going to try and do now, I think, is probably head across to the rover cam. Check out this buffalo. Now, he's a little suspicious, and they say that buffalo look at you as though you owe them money. Well, I think this buffalo certainly looks like that. Uh, he's deeply, deeply confused. Now, we're going to hope desperately that he stays precisely where he is until the TV comes back. We've got two minutes left. I must apologize for Ronald's slightly squonk picture, but that's just the way Ronald is, you know. He's not very, uh, he's not very level-headed fellow. Anyway, like I said yesterday, having all of you along with us, our regular viewers and perhaps some new ones as a result of yesterday, uh, it feels like a, a team of people joyfully watching us and I thank you very much for your support and the rest of the team does too. I can't believe we've got Sundile here. I think it's the most spectacular thing in the world. Um, I know I've often said that Mvula, our 13 year old male leopard friend was my favorite, but it's a tough close call between him and Sundile. Sundile, well, he's almost two years old. He's had a very challenging life. And that's the reason, you know, I used to like Mvula so much is because he's not the biggest leopard in the world. And I'm, well, I'm not the biggest man in the world. And so finding a small fellow like that out here that has made such a success of himself, I think is just so very special. Right, here we're going back to the rover, everybody. We're going to come out of the internet onto TV with the rover. But not out of the internet. That's a terrible way of putting it. Uh, everything will remain completely the same for you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, there's still 30 seconds, 30 to go. Oh. Twenty seconds, twenty, everybody. Please excuse my silence. I'm just uh, sort of stealing myself. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to this Father's Day spectacular. In the middle of your screen, a buffalo lying down. Ronald is filming him. That's Ronald the Rover. You are live from the iconic Kruger National Park. It's a joy to have you with us. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Send us your shout outs for your fathers. Send us your questions to hashtag Safari Live and we'll answer all of those that we can and we'll send as many shout outs as we possibly can. One of the most <laughs> marvelous things about this of course is that we have so many different feeds let's just have one more quick look at Ronald the Rover 
and he is now, I just want to tell you a little bit more about him. He's, this is his second TV special, of course, and he is, I know, uh, at a little bit of an angle. Uh, he's not a level-headed fellow, is our Ronald, but that buffalo was looking at him deeply suspiciously, and so Ronald didn't want to move at all and uh, make it a little bit scared. Let's head across to the ultimate survivor. He has found a reptilian friend. Welcome back to the bushwalk and we've got a little surprise here for you. Right here at the end of my finger is a girdled lizard living in this burnt out stump. Now what makes girdled lizards so fantastic for me is that they only live on one stump for almost their entire lives. And they're really really pretty little lizards. They have scales that have got these big ridges on them. And you might be able to see some just behind his head. It's almost a spiny lizard. It has so many ridges on him. Now, unfortunately, the pet trade all over the world trades in these little guys because they're easy to find. They're easy to find in these stumps. They don't go anywhere and they're really, really pretty. And so it's quite rare to find one of these girdled lizards outside of a national park like we're in at the moment. We find quite a few of them, but I must be honest with you, Outside of the reserves, we don't see many of these at all. Now what he's hoping to catch is a bunch of, they call it invertebrates. Alright, he is now just looking at me. He knows that I'm here, I know that he's there. Doesn't have a tongue like a traditional lizard would that flicks out taste the air and flick in. They got quite a thick tongue. It's quite purplish. Can you believe it? They'll come out during the day, bask on this log at the top. They get all their energy from the sun. They are cold blooded, which means that all the metabolic energy that they need to process their food is harvested from the sun and from the environment around them. And from there, he will move between the shade and his sunspots only when it's hot and hunt for the rest of this log for all these beetles. Uh, he's disappeared a little bit deeper into the into the stump. Alrighty. Still in there. <laughs> While we get up and carry on finding you some more interesting things to look at, Brent's back with those elephant. We've caught up with this massive herd of elephants and we've just parked ahead of them. And I'm hoping they're gonna walk right next to the vehicle. Remember, this is live, it's Father's Day. If you wanna know about elephants or send your dad a shout out, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Now, these are incredible animals. A big, big male can weigh up to 14,000 pounds. The adult females that are around us probably weigh around nine, 10,000 pounds and incapable of consuming a massive amount of veg vegetation in a day. Oh, there comes a mom and a little one walking at the back. That little baby is probably a year and a half, two years old. There we go. Now the rest of the herd is just up here and we're not gonna make ourselves or push ourselves into their space. We're gonna wait here and let them come to us rather. Uh, hi, Alan. Big welcome on the back of the Gandro vehicle. Alan says, well, I know you guys don't try uh, push the animals too far or keep your, your distance, but has there ever been a time when they've come after me? Uh, not really. There has been a few close moments with, with elephants, but not here uh, in the Central African rainforest and in Botswana. But fortunately, nothing since I've been here. And also, the elephant gives you warning signs that they're unhappy and gives you a chance to get out of that area before it becomes too risky. So here they come. Oh. Big, big herd coming. If you have a look just behind here, you can see the dust created from their feet. So you can see quite windy today and we are in a drought. That's where all that dust's coming from. Isn't that absolutely spectacular? 
Now these elephants are free to roam in a massive eight and a half million acre unfenced wilderness area called the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park. And oh, coming right up to us behind these ones. Look at that. These guys are going to come a bit closer than those. Now I'm sitting on Juma Private Game Reserve at the moment, enjoying the spectacular elephant sighting. Now elephants can be a bit nervous in the wind. They're not showing any of those signs at the moment, but we're not going to chase them around too much. I'm going to let them just disappear. Oh, there we go, a little snort. And look at that trunk, over a hundred thousand muscles in there. Hi Debbie in Vancouver, welcome to this live African safari and on this Father's Day weekend and speaking of fathers, Debbie would like to know do adult elephant bulls play any part in the rearing of the young? They play very very little part Debbie, they're, they're generally only found with the breeding herds and that's what we call a group of females and youngsters. When there's a female in heat and they are going to mate, normally they try spend their time away from the the breeding herds and only coming into contact with them when it's ma time for mating. They don't have a set mating season as such, but elephants, very interestingly, can, will only mate when the females in estrus or heat and the males in a heightened hormonal uh, state called must. And uh, then those elephant bulls can be a little bit more unpredictable then. I am hoping we are going to find a massive eddy bull before the end of this live African safari. As I said, in the strong wind, I'm not going to put any pressure. I'm going to let those elephants meander off into the distance. And I think we're going to go see what else we can find in this absolutely incredible African wonderland that we are privileged enough to call home. So while we do that, you know, I was talking about numbers and places. James is going to explain a little bit more in detail about exactly where we are. So this is a sort of zoomed in map of Juma Private Game Reserve. It's 3,000 acres of wonderful wildlife land. Now none of the lines that you can see on this map are lines that the animals have to pay attention to. Like I said at the beginning, we're in the middle of eight and a half million acres of landscape that the animals are free to come and go across as they please. These are just human boundaries that we're not allowed to cross. Now I'm going to show you where everyone is. Brent is around this water hole here and those elephants with any luck will go down and have a drink. There's an elephant. That's a very beautiful elephant, isn't it, David? Lovely. Jim. Lovely elephant. Thank you very much. And then Steph is somewhere around here, west of what we call Treehouse Dam, which is down there. There it is there. We'll draw Steph. Steph doesn't have much hair, nor do I, so we'll just give him side hair and a stick, of course. And then, of course, we have Jamie, and Jamie is with that magnificent male leopard over here, actually not far from where we are. There we are. There's Jamie, beautiful Jamie, like an elegant antelope, of course. And of course, she's with Sindila, who is a cat. Wonderful. Now, we are actually just over here, not far at all. In fact, that's exactly where we are. We are not far from where you are. Ronald the Rover is sitting over there. And that's basically the lay of the land at the moment. Now, what we're going to do, you've seen those incredible elephants with Brent. We've spent about 30 years, well not me personally of course, I'm much too young for that, but we've spent 30 years in the Sabi sands here with game drive vehicles. And the elephants have developed a relationship with us, as have the leopards. Take a look at this. Elephants are an iconic keystone species of the wilderness and they have captured our hearts and minds like no other. The herds are fascinating to observe and extremely important to the health of African ecosystems. Elephants live in complex matriarchal societies. Calves are raised and mentored by caring relatives and friends and their playfulness and intelligence in so many ways mimics our own. He is very, very close. He's pushing his trunk against the car. You can feel the car moving. 
More than 30 years of human activity has made the elephants of the Sabi sand relatively comfortable around our vehicles. Sometimes, however, their trusting nature turns to curiosity. Normally, elephants will give a warning if they are uncomfortable with our presence. But six tons of curious elephant can be intimidating, and this huge bull crossed the line between curiosity and comfort. While no animal is inherently aggressive, an enormous animal like this bull is potentially very dangerous. Just a glance from these giants is enough to command our respect in the Sabi Sand. Well, this, everybody, was the answer to the quiz. And Lucy Spaulding, you said it was a lion's tooth. Uh, Lucy, not quite a tooth, more a thumbnail. This is the dew claw of a big male lion who I'm sure was a father. Now, Ellen, I don't think your father is a lion, but he is in Afghanistan. And you don't know if he's able to watch or not, but we'll just send a special Safari Live Father's Day shout out to him all the way in Afghan. And I hope you're not missing him too much on this very special day. Right, I think we're moving across now back to our hopefully father to be one day Sundile the leopard welcome back onto the back of your live safari vehicle experience where we are still with our extraordinary young male leopard he's just given us a few yawns just before you came across to us and he's showing some signs of restlessness, although I think that most of those are due to the flies fluttering about his ears and causing that constant twitching. Now, as the shadows start to lengthen and the temperature drops, the wind is blowing out here in the middle of Juma Private Game Reserve. Our lion may be the master of the night, but a leopard, a leopard is a jack of all trades, definitely by far the most adaptable of the creatures. Their camouflage gives them the most incredible advantage when it comes to just sheer stealth. They are built for strength and for secrecy and subtlety. Now, as the wind starts to blow, we've got the perfect hunting conditions. Now, you've seen how thick this vegetation is around us. It's the perfect spot for a leopard to hide out. And given their opportunistic nature, and the fact that he is totally hidden and that the wind is howling and pushing his smell away from us, there's always a chance that an unsuspecting antelope might come through. But for now, he's doing what cats do and cats do best, oh, <laughs> which is being perfectly relaxed. Now, Kathy, on our special Father's Day, you wanted to know if Sindile's father will recognize and accept him. Oh, there's a thorn there, boy. That doesn't look very comfortable at all. Definitely not the best spot to roll over. Well, Kathy, a warm welcome onto the back of our live safari. The answer is, we don't really know. Sindina is at that crucial cusp of adulthood where he would be becoming independent and disperse away from his mother. First of all, we don't know who Sindile's father is. We've got a couple of candidates. They could be Tingana the male leopard, the Anderson male leopard, or Mvula, the male leopard that sprang into action yesterday completely unexpectedly and completely taking us by surprise. This is an unprecedented situation, Kathy. We have no idea how things are going to play out. In a normal leopard's life, if Sindile's father was around and he'd been with his mother the whole time, he would have been absolutely fine. But the truth is, these are wild animals playing out a scenario that is, as I said, without precedent and completely confusing. And the animals do not read the textbooks, which means that for our live safari, the rawest and truest way of watching wildlife in Africa, you never know what to expect. You'll have to stay tuned after the break to find out what happens.